consultant originally from Greenfield, Iowa, Norma Nielsen. A public relations administrator from Duncanville, Texas, Charles Beal. And our returning champion, a nightclub singer from Houston, Texas, Sandra Gorski. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilder. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Players, welcome to Jeopardy half hour of answers, questions, trivia, and hopefully for you three, Sandra, Charles, and Norma, a lot of cash. You'll earn it simply by coming up with the correct questions when we reveal those important answers on the board. In the first round of play, one daily double that will come into play, hopefully, to help you double any or all of your cash up to that point. You want to earn as much as possible because the player with the most gets to keep it, comes back on our next show as returning champion. Right now, let's begin the first round on Jeopardy. $500 answers at the bottom, $100 at the top in these categories. Los Angeles, television families, trains, 1964, fashion, and music on the map. Sandra, you make the first selection. Good luck to you. And I'll go with music on the map for $100, please. At the upper right-hand corner, we have this clue for you, players. I love this city in the winter when it drizzles and in the summer when it sizzles. Charles. Where is Paris? Paris, yes. I love Paris. Right. Alex, over to 1964 for 100, please. The answer this time. The Warren Commission concluded that this killer of President Kennedy acted alone. Charles, again. L who was Lee Harvey Oswald? Correct. For 1964 another for 200, please. Moving down now. The name for NASA's program to launch pairs of astronauts into space. Let's hear from Norma. What was Gemini? That is right. Los Angeles for 100. Upper left-hand corner. The city's largest university. Or what happens when the smog lifts? Norma? But it's Claremont. Sorry, no. Sandra? What is UCLA? Yes, when the smog lifts, you UCLA. see it. UCLA. It's good. Man. You like that, Charles? A <laughs> little bit of humor from our writers. About every seven weeks, whether we need it or not, they inject a little bit of humor in the program. Sandra, select again. Let's try TV families for 100, please. Certainly. The answer is Brett, Bart, Bo, and Brent. Sandra? Who were the, uh, 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 Sorry. Charles or Norma? Television. Norma? Who were the Mavericks? Who were the Mavericks? That is right. Yes, indeed. TV mm. families for 200. Continuing along. She was Letitia Lawrence on Family, but we knew her better as Buddy. Sandra? Who was, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. You're ringing in without being absolutely sure of the question. Norma? Who's Christy McNichol? Christy McNichol is the young actress's name. Yes, you select again, Norma. TV families for 300. At the middle of the column? Though we never met his father, this doctor from Maine read Dad's letters to B.J. and us. Norma? Who's Hawkeye Pierce? Hawkeye Pierce is right. Yes, go. Los Angeles for 200. Back to that column. The Arroyo Seco Parkway was the first link in this, L.A.'s favorite way to travel. Norma? What is the freeway? Yes, indeed. It goes back to January of 1941. You're in the lead with $900, Norma. Select again. Los Angeles for 300. Continuing along. The second largest city park in the U.S. It's home to an observatory and zoo. Charles. What is Griffith Park? Yes, 4,100 acres of it. Back to 1964 for 300, please. At the middle of that column. French term for thaw in the U.S.-Soviet Cold War. Charles. What is detente? Detente is right. And we're going to take a commercial break right now. You have moved to just $100 away from Norma and our returning champion, Sandra. Not a good beginning for you today, perhaps suffering the sophomore jinx. You're at minus 200, so we'll let you relax for a couple of minutes, and we'll present some important commercial messages for the folks at home, and then we'll come back and continue with the first round on Jeopardy. Right after this. Grapefruit juice? Sure, it's on Jeopardy. Now let's meet the two pretty ladies and the gentlemen who are our players today. First of all, Norma Nielsen, 1973 Iowa Dairy Princess. That was a fun summer job. A fun summer job. What did you have to do to become princess? Milk 12 cows in an hour or something? No, it resembled more of a beauty pageant at the time. And then you were the representative for the... I spent the summer dishing ice cream cones. Oh, now that does sound like a lot of fun. And I hope your visit to us here on Jeopardy proves to be as much fun as well. Thank you. Charles Beale from Duncanville, Texas. Seems to me there's right. a Baptist school in Duncanville, am I right? Dallas Baptist University. Ah, is, uh, you is, work for that one? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, doing what? I'm in public relations, public relations administrator for the college, the university. All right. Tough job? 
Is it a big school? It's, it's a, I enjoy the job very much. Yeah. I enjoy working with young people. It's about, uh, about 1,500 enrollment. Yeah, but working for a Baptist school, Baptist university, you've got to watch yourself. You can't do anything you want. Uh, Especially if potent potables comes up in the second. <laughs> All right, you'll have to stay away from that category, but you're in control of the board. You're going to make the next selection right after I spend a little time talking to Sandra Gorski, and we announced that uh, our Jeopardy! champion on the last program had found out she was pregnant, and we discovered you had a contestant search. What about you and your man? Have you been doing a little searching through names and, to figure out what your child is going to be called? Yeah, they change daily, but we've settled on Matthew and Kate at this point. Matthew and Kate. I think in the 1980s, Matthew is one of the most popular boys' right. names. Okay, good having you back with us. All right, let's go back to uh, Charles. Look over the board, and you tell us where do we, where do we go? L.A. for 400, please. L.A. for four, the answer is, of all major pro sports teams, these are the only two that play in the same division as well as the same city. Charles. Who are the uh, L.A. Uh, Lakers and Clippers? Absolutely right, yes. Both in the NBA. Same division. Go. L.A. for 500. Final clue. For the first few days of 85, this L.A. landmark read Raffi Sod. Sandra. What is the Hollywood sign? Yes, it was a promotional oh. stunt by a group called Raffi. Nice going. You're on the plus side, Sandra, with 300. You're in control of the board. Make uh, a selection. Let's go for fashion for 100. All righty. New category. Superman, Batman, and Dracula all wear this type of cloak. Sandra. What is a cape? You are right. Fashion for 200. Moving down. Gay rights could include this jewelry item, which some gays symbolically wear on the right side. Charles. What is an earring? You are correct. 1964 for 400, please. Moving back down that column. Letters in name of militant civil rights group Corps stood for this. Charles. What is Congress of racial equality. That is right. Go again. 1964 for 500. We'll finish it off with this. In 64, this automaker closed its last American plant, but was still making cars in Canada. Norma. Who is Studebaker? Studebaker. That's right. Oh. For another 500. Select. Fashion for 300. Fashion for three. This late 60s, early 70s pants style was a dead ringer for part of a sailor's uniform. Sandra. What were bell bottoms? You are correct. I'll try fashion for 400. Before World War II, the largest use of raw silk was to manufacture these. Sandra? What was kimonos? No, sorry. Norma? What were stockings? Stockings, hosiery. Yes, silk stockings. That and some chewing gum and a couple of chocolate bars. Have a good time. <laughs> Norma, select again. Let's try trains for 100. Answer is legendary black railroad worker who outraced a steam drill using a hammer. Sandra? Who is Casey? No, sorry. Charles. Who is John Henry? John Henry was a... Trains for 200. Answer. America's first railroad trains were pulled by these. Charles. What were horses? Correct. Trains for 300. We've got less than a minute to go, and the answer this time is an audio daily double. Charles, you've uncovered it, so you've got to make the decision as to how much you want to risk. You have 2,100. 2,100. Let's go for 800. For $800, then. Listen to the music. give you the clue. This Roy Acuff hit is probably country music's best-known train song. What is the Wabash Cannonball? You didn't even want to listen to him. All right. We had Roy standing in the wings ready to sing, but never mind. You put him down and you wind up with 2,900. Select again, I'm locking out on trains. Let's go for 400. Okay. The answer this time. America's fastest train, the Metroliner, runs from New York to this city. Norma. Where is Washington, D.C.? You're right again. TV families for 400. Answer. Of Cagney, Lacey, Hardcastle, and McCormick, the one with a regularly seen TV family. Norma. Who is Cagney? No, sorry. Sandra. Who is Lacey? Lacey, her partner. Yes, indeed. You select Sandra. <laughs> what do you want any time to get to uh, more answers in this round, but a good beginning for all of you, particularly Charles, 2,900 for you, Norma in second place with 18, Sandra the returning champion with six. She's just taking it easy, coasting for now, knowing that she's going to save it all for the big bucks part of our show, which is uh, Double Jeopardy. And we'll start that round right after this. Area, and would like to become a contestant on Jeopardy, write to Jeopardy Contestants, 1541 North Vine Street, Hollywood, California, 90028. And please include your telephone number. our show and Charles you're in good shape you need not worry we have no potent potables as a category in this round to get you in trouble with Dallas Baptist School 
Good luck to all three of you. Let's put the dollar amounts on the board and we'll play Double Jeopardy. Here are the categories. Early man, followed by holidays, poetry, Democrats, movie trivia, and finally languages. Sandra, you're in third place. You go first in this round. Let's start movie trivia for 200. At the top of that column, here is the clue. Red Dawn was the first movie released with this new rating. Charles. What is PG-13? You're absolutely right. Go again. Democrats for 200. Answer. First Southern black woman to serve in Congress, Barbara Jordan, represented this state. Charles. I better get this. Where is Texas? Yes, you got it. <laughs> Democrats for 400. Moving down. Harry Truman began his career with the help from Big Tom Pendergrass, party boss of this city, Charles. Where is, let's say St. Louis. I'm sorry, that is wrong. Norma or Sandra? Norma. Or is Chicago? Nope, that's wrong also. You have to remember the state, which was Missouri, and you have to remember the city, which was Kansas City, oh. not St. Louis. Sorry about that, Charles. We're back to you, though, for the selection. 600 in Democrats. Okay, the answer right at the middle of the column is a daily double. <laughs> And you're already in the lead. You've got more than twice as much money as Norma. How much are you risking on Democrats? You seem to know this category fairly well. Let's try $1,200, please. For $1,200, here's the clue. This champion of the common man escaped through a window when a riot broke out at his inaugural party. Charles? Who was Andy Jackson? Yes, I don't think Andy was a Baptist. You've got $4,100, Charles. Where do we go now? Democrats for $800. Answer. A reformer is a guy who rides through a sewer in a glass-bottom boat, said this 20s New York City mayor. Norma. Who is LaGuardia? No, sorry. Charles. Who is Jimmy Walker? Jimmy Walker is right, yes. Democrats for 1,000. We'll finish it off with this. Montana Democrat who served as Senate Majority Leader longer than anyone. And he was Senate Majority Leader not so very long ago. Mike Mansfield. Mansfield. Mike Mansfield. All right, we're back to you, Charles. Make a selection. Languages for 200. Okay, upper right-hand corner. Only major language with no alphabet. It uses 50,000 characters to represent words. Sandra? What is Chinese? You're right. Let's try movie trivia for 400. Back to that one. Martha Mitchell was supposedly the inspiration for Shirley MacLaine's Oscar role in this film, Charles. What is Terms of Endearment? You're right. Back to languages for 400. Lucky guess. Right next to it. Related to Finnish and Estonian, this Eastern European language is also called Magyar. Charles. What is Hungarian? Right again. Languages for 600, please. At the middle of the column. South Africa's Afrikaans developed from this European language. Charles. What is Dutch? Right again. Languages for 800. Answer. Russian is the most widely spoken member of this Indo-European language group. Charles. What is Aryan? No. Ooh. Sandra. What is Slavic? Slavic languages. Right That's right. Uh, Charles offering congratulations. He has lost control of the board. It's up to you, Sandra. Okay, let's try movie trivia for 600. Back to that one. In 1984, Ernie Hudson was the fourth and equal opportunity member of this movie team. Sandra. Who were the Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Oh. You got it for six. Nice going. I'm going to try poetry for 200. All right, let's go to this new category. Joyce Kilmer wrote it for Mrs. Henry Mills Alden, not a lumberjack. Charles? What is trees? Right. Languages down at the bottom for a thousand. The final clue is, in 1929, this language went from Arabic to Latin script. Let me give it to you. This is good that you should miss the thousand dollars one. A thousand dollar answers because those are supposed to be more difficult. What is Turkish? Turkish. Turkish. Charles, you make a choice. I'll go back to... No, let's start with Early Man for 200. All righty. Early Man for two. Johnny Hart comic strip in which prehistoric men philosophize, Charles. What is B.C.? Right. Early Man for 400. Moving down. Era of Paleolithic Man is named for this substance from which he made most of his tools. Norma. What is the Iron Age? No, sorry. Charles. What is the Stone Age? Stone Age. Paleolithic. Alex, Early Man for 600, please. Charles... The clue. It is now generally believed earliest humans lived on this continent. Charles. I'm going to try where is Africa. That's right. Early man for 800. Answer. Of Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, and Homo erectus, the one which most closely resembles modern man. Charles. What is Homo erectus? Sorry, Ooh. that is wrong. Sandra. What is Cro-Magnon? Cro-Magnon is the really? one who most closely <laughs> resembles modern man. Yes, indeed. Sandra, you make a choice now. Oh, let's try a... Uh... Poetry for 400, please. Back to poetry. In the Longfellow poem, her name means laughing water. Charles. Who is Minnehaha? Right. 
Poetry for 600, please. At the middle. Don Marquis defined poetry as what this poet saw when he went blind. Charles. Who was Milton? Right. Oh. Okay. I thought maybe Homer, but let's try poetry for 800. The answer is... Generations of scholars have yet to figure out the identity of the Mr. W.H. to whom he dedicated his sonnets. Charles. Who was Shakespeare? That is right. We've got less than a minute to go in this round. Well, let's finish poetry for a thousand. At the bottom, we have a daily double. <laughs> We've already got 7,900, Charles. How much are you going to risk on poetry? I am going to risk no more than $900. All right, for 900. In John Howard Payne poem, the line which follows, Nor, no more from that cottage again will I roam. Be it ever so humble, Question. there's... Oh, what is, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Absolutely right. Another 900 for you, taking you to 88 total. Make a selection. Thank you. Early man for 1,000, please. Last clue in that column. In 1959, his wife Mary literally stumbled upon Zinzanthropus, believed to be 1,750,000 years old. Charles. Who is Dr. Leakey? Leakey, right. That's another thou. Select. Holidays for 200. At the top, let's see if we can run this category. Held in Munich, Germany, this 16-day celebration actually begins in September. Sandra. What is the Oktoberfest? Yes, go. Movie trivia for 800. Back to that one. Viewers liked this director's video of Bruce Springsteen dancing in the dark more than his body double. Sandra. Who is Brian De Palma? You're right. Go again. Movie trivia for 1,000. Last clue. You must remember this. It was Bergman and Henry's destination after leaving Casablanca. Sandra. What is Paris? No, sorry. That cost you 1,000. Darn. Charles or Norma? No risk. No? Remember they left Casablanca. They took the plane to Lisbon. Plane to Lisbon. Sandra, select quickly. Holidays for 400. Answer. Jewish holiday on which the 1973 Mideast War began. Norma. What is Yom Kippur? Yes, go. Holiday for six. Oh, we don't have a chance. But that's all right. You've got 600, so we're going to be playing Final Jeopardy along with Charles and Sandra. Remember, the one with the most cash at the end of the day gets to keep it and return on our next program. The other players receive some lovely prizes. And here's Johnny Gilbert to describe them. Today's second place contestant will receive Frigidaire's finest 18 cubic foot frost-proof refrigerator freezer with textured steel doors for no fingerprints and fully adjustable tinted glass shelves furnished by Frigidaire. And Mitchell Designs hand silk screen wall coverings and matching fabrics offers the latest fashion and coloring in both contemporary and traditional design for every room in your home. Furnished by Mitchell Designs. Today's third place contestant will receive Berkline's contemporary wall-away rocker recliner. Styled with the European influence, this cushy, comfortable wall-away can be placed near a wall and still recline fully without touching the wall. Furnished by Berkline. And now let's go back to Alex Trebek. Sandra, Charles, and Norma are going to be thinking about how much they're going to wager today on this final Jeopardy category. <laughs> U.S. States. They'll make their decision. They'll write it down in secret. And we'll come back in a minute or two to decide the championship. Welcome back. We're about to decide the championship. The category is U.S. States. Once I give our three players the final Jeopardy answer, they'll have 30 seconds in which to come up with the correct question. Be sure it is in that form. Here's the answer. State that was southernmost of the original 13 colonies. Good luck, players. down here and start with our Iowa Dairy Princess who had $600, third place coming into this round. Norma, did you have the right question, do you think? I think so. All right, let's see what it is. What is Georgia? You did have it. That's right. right. And have you there. made Charles very happy, too, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how much you're adding to your total. 500, that means you now have $1,100. And we'll move down here to our returning champion, Sandra Gorski. Had 3,000, was in second place. You're looking kind of enigmatic right now, Sandra. What did you put down? Oh, you had to go further south than Virginia, as you know. You had to go all the way to Georgia. This is going to cost you some money. How much? $29.99. Well, you went big, left yeah. leaving yourself with a dollar. We move over to Charles Beale, who had $9,800. He thinks he's going to become our new Jeopardy champion. Let's see. He most certainly is. And how much money is he going to have as a result? $3,000 more for a total of $12,800. Charles, congratulations. We'll see you on our next program. 
It's been a delight spending this half hour with all three of you. Thank you very much. And you too, ladies and gentlemen. Tune us in next time, won't you, for more of Jeopardy. Some of our departing contestants will receive the answer is Diet Shasta. Now with a great taste of NutraSweet. Choose one of 18 great flavors and say, I want to pop Diet Shasta. New Glade Fabric Fresh. Fresher fabrics mean a fresher home in spring clean or ultra fresh scents. Glade Fabric Fresh. From Armally Fine Sponges and Fix-Up Products for the Painter Do-It-Yourselfer, Clamshell Sponges, Cheesecloth, and much more, America's Coming Clean with Armally. Zip Strip Paint Varnish and Stain Remover. And Real Wood, the Natural Tone Exterior Wood Preservative for beautiful wood that lasts. Rioniti, America's Best Loved Imported Wine. Red, White, Rosé, and Gold. Have you tried Rioniti on ice? It's so nice. This is Jeopardy! the studio are today's contestants. A psychologist from Houston, Texas, Jim Stewart. A banking secretary from West Hollywood, California, Ann Davis. And our returning champion, a public relations administrator from Dukenville, Texas, Charles Beal, whose cash winnings total $12,800. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you very much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Players, good to have you joining us. I hope you enjoy the next half hour here on Jeopardy. We had a good time on our last program. It was very exciting for our returning champion, Charles, because he won a lot of money. I will remind all three of you that in the first round of play, one daily double to assist you in doubling any or all of your cash winnings up to that point. If you're all set, good luck. Let's go to work. <laughs> $500 answers at the bottom, $100 at the top in these categories. Nature, flags, France, shoes, sports, and in quotation marks, old. We know what that means. All right, Charles, good luck, my friend. Go ahead and make a selection. Thanks so much, Alex. Let's start with France for $100, please. The very first clue of the match is this. This famous Cardinal of France paid Sweden to fight the Habsburgs for him. Charles. Who was Cardinal Richelieu? That is right. France for 200. Moving down. Of Charles the Bald, Charles the Simple, and Charles the Short, the one never to rule France. James? Who is Charles the Bald? Sorry, that is incorrect. Charles or Anne? Charles. Who is Charles the Simple? Sorry, that ah! is wrong. Anne. Oh, uh, who is uh, Charles the Shore? Yeah. <laughs> there was a fourth one, but I didn't let them put it in. It was Charles the Plaid. <laughs> Anne, you get to select again. Let's try shoes for a hundred. All right, here we go. A low-down cad, or what's underneath the back of the sole. James. What is a heel? Right. Let's try uh, sports for 100, please. Sports for a hundred. The Dodgers' mouthy manager, James. Who is uh, Tommy Lasorda? That is right. Sports for 200, please. Moving down. This two-time Olympic medalist lit the flame at the 84 Summer Games. Charles. Who was Bruce Jenner? Sorry, that is incorrect. And? Who was Jesse Owens? No, that's wrong. I don't that's remember. Wrong. And James doesn't remember, even though it was last year. It was Rafer Johnson, mm. two-time Olympic gold medalist in the decathlon. James, we're back to you for the selection. Uh, sports for 300, please. Sports for three. An occupational hazard for soccer players is getting banjoed meaning being kicked here. Charles. Where is the rear end? No. Ah. James. Where is the knee? No. And do you want to try it? Getting kicked in the groin. Oh, that's close enough. No. Not quite close enough. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just kidding. If you've been kicked in the rear and kicked in the groin, you would know the difference. Enough said. James, select. Uh, let's try my category, old for 100, please. Old for 100. Top right-hand corner. Whiskey, bitters, sugar, a twist of lemon peel, water, ice, and a fruit garnish. Charles. What is an old-fashioned? Yes, and we're getting into a booze category here, it seems like. I so, just lost my job. All right. Okay. Let's back to France for 300, please. In the middle of that column, motto of the revolution. It's now the national motto. James. V uh, vive la France. No. Remember to phrase it in the form of a question also. Charles. What is liberté, égalité, fraternité? Absolutely right. Liberty, equality, and fraternity. And that takes you to minus 200, Charles. Not a great beginning. Nope. And Anne, somewhat better, at zero. <laughs> Charles, somewhat worse, at minus 600. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll pause for a commercial Thanks. break, yeah. and then we'll come back and chat with the players and have some more answers and hopefully correct questions. <laughs> Trying to 
recall one of our programs a few months ago in which all three contestants at the first commercial break uh, wound up with no money at all. This is somewhat worse because we have two deficits here, but let's talk to them nevertheless. Jim Stewart, a psychologist from Houston, Texas, but a man with an interesting occupation. It says here you own a typical Texas honky-tonk. Mm, yeah, Four-piece band, uh, Wednesday, Fridays, and Saturdays, and it's just what it says it is. It's a typical Texas honky-tonk. Pool table, dart board, and beer. No long necks anymore, though. No long necks. Okay, good to have you with us. I hope you turn that minus sign to a plus. Ann Davis from West Hollywood. But I got the feeling, listening to you uh, question a couple of my answers a few moments ago, that you are not from California. Where are you from? I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, all right, that's okay. You have a pretty accent. Oh. Pretty young lady. I hope you do well on the program. And I'm glad you knew that French king, by the way. Charles Beale, $12,800 in cash. Now, I neglected to ask you, we've had priests on the program before, Roman Catholic priests who have made a vow of poverty so that what they win goes to their religious order. All the cash you win goes to your pockets or to the uh, Dallas uh, Baptist University? Well, I can, I can decide myself. Uh, but to me, being here and playing Jeopardy is, is, the, is the fun of it, is what I'm here for. So I think I'll, I will donate a substantial sum, as a matter of fact, to the university. Hey, that's very nice of you. All right, congratulations. You're in control of the board. You gave us the last correct question. Look it over, and you tell me where we go next. France for 400. France for four. 91% of the people in France voted to give this African possession independence in 1962. Charles. What is Algeria? You are right. France for 500. We'll finish it off with this. Occupation of Gérard Depardieu and... What is a film actor? That's right, yes, one of their big French stars. Yes, indeed, handsome men, too. Go. Let's try old for 200. Answer? The mongrel dog loved by Tommy Kirk in the 1957 Disney film. James. What is old yeller? Old yeller, yep. Uh, old for 300, please. The answer this time. Until recently, it regularly spouted off every 65 minutes or so. Charles. What is old faithful? Yes, and due to a seismic movement, it's kind of gotten irregular in recent years. Charles, select again. Flags for 100. Flags for one. Traditional color of the banners of revolution, as in Russia. James. What is red? Yes. Flags for 200, please. Moving down. Motto inscribed on American Revolution's rattlesnake flag. Charles. What is don't tread on me? Correct. Flags for 300. At the middle of the column, this clue. Large letter found on the flag of African nation of Rwanda. James. What is R? R, right. <laughs> flags for 400, please. Symbol of Islam found on flags of Algeria, Turkey, and Mauritania. James. What is the moon backwards? The moon backwards? All right, the crescent, yes. Okay, we'll give it to you. That's the way you want to describe it. They talk funny in Texas sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead, make a selection. Let's try old for 400, please, Alex. Old for four. The morals trial of Oscar, Arthur Oscar Wilde was held at this London landmark. James. What is Old Bailey? Old Bailey is right. Old for 500, please. The final clue. He also made the Rio automobile. Charles. Who is Olds? Olds. Ransom Eli Olds. Yes, the car was named for his initials. R-E-O. Select, Charles. Right. You've got 1,200. You're in the lead. Nature, 100. Right. Ohio State fans know the horse chestnut tree by this name, James. Oh, uh, what is the maple? Sorry, you're taking too long. Charles. What's the Buckeye? Yes, that's why they call it the Buckeye State. Go again, Charles. Nature for 200. The average gestation period of the species Homo sapiens, James. What is nine months? That's right. Uh, let's try sports for 400, please. The answer is, in 1973, he became the first pro football player to rush for over 2,000 yards, James. Who was Jim Brown? No, sorry, Charles. Oh. Who is O.J. Simpson? O.J. Simpson is right. We've got less than a minute to go in the round. Lecture for 300. Back to that one. On a fish, they are classified as dorsal, anal, and caudal. James. What are fins? Right. Sports for 500, please. Finishing off that category. This team's 39 consecutive winning seasons from 1926 to 64 is the longest in any pro sport. James. Who are the Montreal Canadiens? Sorry, that is incorrect. Charles or Do not N? know. Do not know. I'll give it to you. Who are the New York Yankees? The Yankees did it. James, oh. back to you for the Nature choice. for 400, please. Nature for four. Body part a snake or lizard uses for the sense of smell. James. What is the tongue? Right, select. Nature for 500, please. The last answer in the category is a daily double. You've got $700, James. You're trailing Charles by 1,000. You can risk all of your 700 or any part of it you want. Uh, let's try 700. For 700, here is the answer. The three kinds of great apes. The three kinds what? of great apes. 
What are gorillas? Right. Orangutans? Correct. And monkeys? Sorry, that is incorrect. The last one are chimpanzees. Gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees. You're back to zero. Select again. Flags for 500 bucks. We won't have a chance to hear any more answers. You got back down to zero. You uh, were at minus 600 a little while ago, James. So look at it as a positive sign. You're even Steven. Ann's in second place with 500. Charles has 1,700. But things move very quickly in double jeopardy, and we're going to set the board up for that important round, and we'll begin it right after this. <laughs> on the part of our three players in that first round. Not much cash earned, but let's see if we can't change all of that as we play the double Jeopardy round. $1,000, the value of the answers at the bottom, 200 at the top. Here are the categories. Literature, 19th century America, child stars, famous paintings, geology, and since we had old in the first round, we have young in this one. And James, you get a running start. Make the selection. <laughs> geology, geology for 200, please, Alex. Geology for two. Striking this hard form of quartz with steel produces a spark. James. What is flint? Right. Geology for 400, please. If you journeyed 1,800 miles toward the middle of the earth, you'd find this central portion. James. What is the core? Correct. Young for 200, please. Answer. CBS soap set in Genoa City. James. What is the young and the restless? That is right. Young for 400, please. Founded in 1844 and known by its initials, it preaches peace and teaches basketball. James? What is Brigham Young University? No, sorry. Ann? Um, what is the Young Teacher's School? No. Oh, by gosh, did we stump you on this one? How quickly they forget Teacher's the Young basketball. Men's Christian oh, Association, YMCA. also known as the YMCA. Remember the category. C-A. Oh. Yes, indeed, Charles, that's it. Give your uh, fellow players some good advice. Remember the category. Select, James. Famous paintings for 200, please. The answer is, also known as La Gioconda, it's the most valuable painting in the world. James. What is the Mona Lisa? You're right. Famous paintings for four, please. 400, please. Picasso painted the three musicians in this real square style. Charles. What is cubism? You are right. Famous paintings for 600, please. At the middle, French impressionist who kept his ballerinas on their toes in the dancing class. Charles. Who was Edgar Degas? Correct. Famous paintings for 800, please. The answer is... The abduction of these women by Roman leader Romulus was subject of a Poussin painting. Charles? Who were the Sabine women? Sabine or Sabine women, yes. Famous paintings for 1,000. At the bottom, his abstract nude descending a staircase caused a sensation at the 1913 New York Armory show. Charles? Who was Marcel Duchamp? Hey, the man knows his art. You're absolutely right again. Another 1,000 for you. You're in the lead with 4,500. Thank you. Let's try literature for 200. Okay, upper left-hand corner, let's go to work. Michener wrote a novel about it the same year it became a state. Charles. What is uh, Colorado? No. Centennial. Nope. James? What is Hawaii? Hawaii, yeah. Literature for 400, please. Literature for four. Jane Seymour played the Ava Gardner role in the TV version of this Hemingway novel. Charles. What is East of Eden? Sorry, that is oh. incorrect. Anne. What is For Whom the Bell Tolls? That is also wrong. And James doesn't want to try it. Do you remember The Sun Also Rises? Now so, I remember it. it it's, uh, <laughs> you find it in the Bible as well, Charles. James, you select. Child stars for 200, please. Child stars for two. Our gang member who made over one and a half million dollars as a child star in films like The Champ, Charles. Who was uh, uh, Jackie Coogan? Nope. James. Who was Jackie Cooper? Jackie ah! Cooper, yes, indeed. Child stars for 400, please. The answer. In 74, she became the youngest person to ever win an acting Oscar. James. Who is Tatum O'Neill? You're right again. Child stars for 600. The answer at the middle of the column is a daily double, an audio daily double. Charles has a little over twice what you've got right now, James. How close would you like to uh, narrow that gap? Uh, I'm going to go for 1,500, Alex. For 1,500. All right, here is the clue for you. At age 15, little Peggy March had this, her only major hit. Listen. I will follow him. Absolutely yeah. right. Nice going. You've got $3,300. James, you don't have to lean into that microphone to talk to us. Thank you. We'll pick it up. Now, make a selection. Young for 600, please. Answer at the middle of that column. 
This big gorilla went ape over Terry Moore, not Fay Ray. Charles. Who is uh, uh, King Kong? No, nope, sorry. And? Who is young King Kong? No. <laughs> James? Who is Mighty Joe Young? Mighty Joe Young. Charles forgot the category and thought she'd take advantage, and James picked up the books. Make, some, uh, make a selection there, James. There's geo uh, geology for 600, please. All righty. The largest are called ice sheets, found in Greenland and the Antarctic. Charles. What are glaciers? That is correct. Select again for me. Geology for 800, please. For $800, this clue. <laughs> Aluminum silicate or a 60s Leon Eura spy story, which became a Hitchcock film. Charles. What is topaz? Right. All right. <laughs> Geology for 1,000, please. The final clue. It's the submerged land surrounding the continents, Charles. What is the continental shelf? You are right again for $1,000. Nice going. I love the way you get excited earning money. That's the way it should be. And the game is fun to play. Okay. Literature for 600. Back to that category. Occupation of Silas, whose death is title and subject of Robert Frost poem. Charles? Death of a... What is a hired man? Hired man? Death yes, hired. Death of a hired man. Mm, be a little more specific. We'll give you one more shot at it. Well, um, a salesman. No, sorry. I can't give it to you then. We're going for the specific title, and it's okay. Death of a Hired Hand. That's the title of the poem. Death of a Hired Hand, not man. We've got less than a minute to go in the round. Charles, make a selection. 19th century America for 200. At the top of this column. In the pre-Civil War South, this crop was more valuable than all others combined. Charles. What is cotton? You're right. Go. 19th century America for 400. Answer. Wounded in the Lincoln Conspiracy, he survived and went on to arrange the Alaska Purchase. Charles again. Who is Seward? Right. 19th century America for 600. In the middle. Though under the legal age at the time, this great compromiser was first elected to the Senate from Kentucky in 1806. James. Who was Henry Clay? You are right. Go. Job. Young for 800, please. Young for eight. 1960s group whose hits included Groovin', Good Lovin', and A Girl Like You. And Who are the young rascals? Yes. Select Literature again. Literature for 800. Literature for eight. Where Alf, the sacred river, ran through caverns measureless to man. Charles. Uh, where was Xanadu? Yep. Oh. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Charles, you wound up with 7,300. James in second place with 45. He was pushing you there for a while. And you were caught between a rock and a hard place, and their names were Charles and James. And as a result, you couldn't get anything rolling on the program, and you wound up with a minus sign in front of you. But thank you for joining us. The fellows will be playing Final Jeopardy. Remember, the one with the most cash keeps it. The other players receive some prizes. Here's Johnny Gilbert to describe what we have today. Today's second place contestant will receive a queen-size converter sofa with looks and comfort of a regular sofa. Accommodate unexpected overnight guests in this loose pillow back sofa covered in rich velvet, furnished by Broyhill, and Benchmark Carpet Mill's lovely Shadow Dance Collection carpeting. It's available in a variety of colorations and is manufactured with third-generation branded nylon, furnished by Benchmark Carpet Mills. Today's third place contestant will receive Smith Corona's portable Enterprise electronic typewriter, a sleek new state-of-the-art typewriter furnished by Smith Corona. And now let's go back to Alex Trebek. In a moment, James and Charles are going to be making their wagers on this Final Jeopardy category. The military. That's a good one. We'll find out how good and how important it is in deciding our champion right after this. Welcome back. While you folks were enjoying those commercial messages, I had my research staff checking on a number of things, in particular that Robert Frost poem. And some sources say we should have accepted hired man. And that means that our returning champion, Charles's score is going to change. There was, in addition, uh, a mistake that we made earlier, but your correct score should now read 7,000. 500 and Charles was informed of that during the break and made his decision on how much to wager and James Stewart had 4500 to wager on this category the military now I have to give them the answer they will then have 30 seconds in which to come up with the correct question here we go maintaining the world's largest army this country has about three and a half million troops on active duty good luck players
line and start with you, Jim. You had 4,500. You were in second place. Did you get the right question? What is the Chinese army? You are right. And you're going to add how much? 4,495, giving you 8,995. Charles seems to be very happy. He's got 7,500 right now. Did he get the right question? What is the People's Republic of China? You are correct. And you're adding 1,600 for a total of 9,100. You beat him. You remain champion by $105. Congratulations to you. Got a two-day total of 21,900. We'll see you on our next edition of Jeopardy. Join us then. So long, everyone. Some of our departing contestants will receive The Answer is Diet Shasta, now with a great taste of NutraSweet. Choose one of 18 great flavors and say, I want a pop, Diet Shasta. Today's pledge does more than polish. Now spray it on your cloth, and it's great for everyday dusting, too. The refinishing team Zip Strip Paint Varnish and Stain Remover and Zip Guard. Clear urethane wood finish for that professional look. If you love juice, imagine a drink made from not one, but five tangy fruits. That's five alive. No single juice refreshes like the five in five alive. Nothing protects wood floors, furniture, and cabinets like Red Devil Polyurethane Clear Wood Finish. It's tough as the very devil. Black Plant Roach Motel kills without poison, insecticide, odor, or mess. In the kitchen? And all over the house. Jeopardy is a production of Mer... Now entering the studio are today's contestants. An attorney from Houston, Texas, Kevin Davis. A technical editor from Arlington, Texas, Bodil Wiggins. And our returning champion, a public relations administrator from Duncanville, Texas, Charles Beal, whose cash winnings total $21,900. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you very much. And you know there are times when I get just as excited as Charles, our returning champion. Nice to have you joining us, ladies and gentlemen, for another half hour of answers questions, trivia, information, and hopefully lots of entertainment for you folks at home. Our current champion has been earning an average of over $10,000 per program, so he's very excited about that. Some other point that I should mention right now, all three of our players, Charles, Bodil, and Kevin, are from the state of Texas. And Texas is one of the categories that we'll be operating with in the first round of our show. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it and play the first round of Jeopardy. <laughs> $9,000 in cash in these categories. Presidential firsts, baby care, nicknames, here it is, Texas, fictional animals, and finally, in quotation marks, noses. And we all know what that means. All right, Charles, do yourself and perhaps your opponents a favor. Make a selection. I will do that, Alex. And I will take the great state of for 100, please. <laughs> Texas for 100. The first answer is this. Where in Texas the stars at night are big and bright? <laughs> Charles. Where is deep in the heart of Texas? You're right. Texas for 200. Answer. This city is largest in Texas and fifth largest in the United States. Bodil. What is Houston? You are right. Uh, baby care for 100, please. All righty. For kids like Linus, it provides social security. Charles. What is his blanket? Correct. Texas for 300. Back to that one. You can get a $65,000 desk shaped like your favorite cow at this Texas-based department store. Bodil? What is Neiman Marcus? You are correct. Baby care for 200. Please. Back to that category. By law, paint on new baby cribs must be free of this element. Charles? What is lead? Lead is right. Tell you what, presidential first for 100. Okay, we'll change our categories. First president to address Congress in a radio broadcast, though we remember him as silent. Bodil? Who was Coolidge? Correct. Baby care for 300. With diphtheria and pertussis, the T in DPT. What Bodil? Is, what is tetanus? Tetanus is right. Go Baby again. Baby care for 400. Moving down. Dr. Spock says that until he's old enough to put his lost teeth under it, 
He's better off without it. Bodil? What is a pillow? You are right again. Go. Baby care for 500. At the bottom? Most experts agree that nursing mothers should drink at least this much milk a day. Bodil? What is six to eight glasses? Six to eight glasses? Six glasses at uh, uh, six glasses. Oh, so, so. Let me do some quick math here before we get from uh, Kevin. Let me think on that. Kevin, we'll get an answer from you. Oh, what is a pint a day? No, you're wrong, definitely. Now I've got, now I've got a rule on Bodil. Six glasses, depending on how many glasses. We're talking about a quart a day. A quart is 32 ounces. Uh, six glasses is six ounces. That's a little too much, I think. A little too much. I got to rule you wrong also, Bodil. Took me a while there, but uh, doing some fast math. You get to select again. Texas for 400. All right, back to that category. In 1978, William P. Clements became the first Republican since 1869 to be elected this. Charles. What is governor? Governor is right. The Lone Star State for 500, We'll please. finish it off with this clue. As big as Rhode Island, this royal ranch is Texas's largest. Kevin. What is the King Ranch? King Ranch is absolutely right, and that takes you to zero. And we're going to take a commercial break right now. Good beginning for Charles and Bodel. $800 apiece, tied for the lead. And when we return, we'll chat with the three of you. I'll probably have more information on how much milk a nursing mother should drink. And then we'll go to more answers and questions. Stay tuned. <laughs> Back to Jeopardy, Texas style. All three of our players from that great state. Let's meet them now. Kevin Davis is an attorney from Houston, and it says here you restore automobiles. We had somebody who worked with antique autos the other day on the program. What do you do? What kind of work? Oh, well, right now I have a 1970 Cadillac that I'm working on. Ah, anything older than that? No, no, just uh, whatever happens to be around. All right. Uh, speaking of whatever happens to be around, all those categories up there are up for grabs, and you will be the one who will make the decision when we get back to you in just a few moments. Bodil Wiggins. I'm sorry, I've been mispronouncing your name so far on the show. You're a technical editor, which means exactly what, Bodil? I try to translate engineering ease into English. Is it tough? <laughs> it's very tough. Well, nice having you with us. Charles Beale from Duncanville, public relations administrator at Dallas Baptist University. 21,900. You've uh, been in Los Angeles for a few days. Have you been enjoying our city? Is this your first visit to Southern California? I tell you, when I was 12 years old, we, uh, we visited Disneyland, but this is really our first. We stayed a week before the, the show and mm -hmm. had a great time. Mesmerizing city. And I'm sure you uh, would say that you've had a great time on the show also with over $21,000 in cash. That's what it came and for. you're tied for the lead right now, but Kevin, you get to select. Look over the board. We're all through with baby care and Texas, so you can't go home in this category anymore. <laughs> Where do you go? Presidential first for 200. The answer is first president to serve more than eight years. Kevin. Who is uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Yes, 12 years, 39 presidential days. Presidential first for 300. Middle of the column. The first Republican to win the presidency. Kevin again. Who is Abraham Lincoln? You are right. Presidential first for 400. First president to visit communist China, Charles. Who is Richard Nixon? You're right, your turn. Presidential first for 500. We'll finish it off with this. George Washington's practice of regularly consulting department heads gave rise to this concept. Kevin? What is a cabinet meeting? Cabinet, yes, indeed. <laughs> Nicknames for 100. Nicknames for one. Let's go to work there. The Leathernecks, Charles. Who are the Marines? Correct. I tell you what, fictional animals for 100. All righty, let's take a look at those. Mr. Moose, Bunny Rabbit, and Dancing Bear all visited his TV treasure house. Bodil. Who is Captain Kangaroo? You are correct. Let's try noses for 100. I've got one that's kind of stuffed at the moment. A photo finish generally means this is how the horse race was won. Charles. What is by a nose? Right. Fictional animals, 200. Moving down that column. Appropriate Sonny and Cher song Paul Bunyan might have sung to his ox. Bodil. Um... Uh... What is blue? Oh, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> Charles or Kevin? Charles. What is, I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Yes, indeed. Select. Fictional animals for 300. At the middle of the column. The first animal Alice saw in Wonderland, Charles. What is the hare? The March hare? No. Ugh. Bodil? What is the white rabbit? The white rabbit oh. is what she saw first. Yes, Bodil, select. The nose is 200. Nose is for two. How some pay for expensive rhinoplasty, Charles. They, what is, they pay through the nose. Correct. Uh, I'm doing better at noses. Now let's try $300 in noses. 300 for noses. It protects a spaceship from heat when re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Bodil? What is the nose cone? Correct. Nose is for 400. Rest and ice and pressure relieve it. Polyps or a fight could provoke it. Bodell. What is a nosebleed? Yes. 
Noses for 500. Last clue. A handheld bouquet in Victorian England, which signified he loves me or not, by type of flowers. Bodil? What is a nosegay? Nosegay is right, and we've got less than a minute to go in this Jeopardy round. Fictional animals, 400. For 400 dollars, famous animal Sears uses on its line of children's clothing. Bodil? What is Winnie the Pooh? You're right again, go. Fictional animals, 500. Last one, the 500 dollar clue. Nurse Nana was one in James Barry's Peter Pan. Bodil? What is it, large dog? A dog is right, yes, select. Nickname's 200. Answer. Since 11 of her 12 husbands met untimely deaths, Martha Jane Canary earned this disastrous nickname. Charles. Who is Calamity Jane? Yes, indeed. Nickname's that's right. 300. The answer is a daily double. You're in second place right now, Charles. Trailing Bodil by 1,400. How much are you risking on nicknames? I would risk a total of uh, $1,000. For $1,000, here's the clue. Before nipping it off in later life, Burt Reynolds and Marlon Brando shared this childhood name. What is Bud? Bud is absolutely right. Nice going. You're up to 2,700, and you're solidly entrenched in second place, but a good beginning for all three of you. Let's see. We've got 58, $6,800 of the 9,000 you people have earned in this round, and that means you have performed well indeed. I hope you keep it up in double jeopardy. We're going to set the board up for that important round, and we'll start it right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. We've got a real good match underway, and for your sake, I hope it continues as we now get set to play Double Jeopardy. Two daily doubles hidden on the board. Remember that, players. 18,000 in cash. Here come some of the dollar amounts. And now let's look at the categories. Classical music. We haven't had that in a while. Government. 20th century. Greek mythology. Tough trivia. And starts with the letter G. At first glance, this would seem to be a fairly tough board. Let's find out. Kevin, you make the first selection. Government for 200. Answer is British Prime Minister who said democracy is the worst system devised by man except for the others. Charles. Who is Winston Churchill? You are right. Classical music for 600. 600, middle of the board. Known in his time as a plagiarist, he composed The Messiah, Charles. Who was George Frederick Handel? You are right. Classical music for 800. Moving down, a daily double. You've got 3,500 and the lead, Charles. How much are you risking? Alex, 2,500. Oh, that'll give you an even 6,000 if you were right. Here's the clue. Prokofiev's folk fable with title characters played by a string quartet and three horns. What is Peter and the Wolf? You've got $6,000. Oh, right. Nice going. Good move on your part. Classical music for $1,000. At the bottom, this clue. An Offenbach opera is based on his tales. Charles. Who was Hoffman? Hoffman, E.T.A. Hoffman. Right again. You're doing well in this category. Thank Select. you, Alex. Classical music for $400. Answer. The instrumental prelude to an opera. Bodil. What is the overture? That is right for four. You select. Tough trivia for $200. New category. None of the members of this Herb Alpert band are Hispanics. Kevin. What is the Tijuana Brass? Right. Government for 400. Government for four. A representative government, or what Plato called his ideal state. Charles. What is a uh, democracy? I'm sorry, that is wrong. Oh. Bodil or Kevin? Remember, Kevin, if you keep oh. pressing, you'll just lock yourself out. Stop, Kevin. <laughs> now press the button, Kevin. Thank you. What is the Republic? That is right. You missed that. Okay, remember you were advised about these buzzers before the program. I don't want it to cost you, and I don't want to be a heavy. Kevin, you select. Government for 600, please. The answer. Chief executive of a Canadian province or the French equivalent of prime minister. Charles. What is a premier? Premier is right. Classical music for 200. We'll finish off that category with this clue. Common name of the instrument known as the pianoforte. Charles? What is the piano? That is right, for another 200. You select again. Go to Greek mythology for 600, please. For six, middle of the board. You're varying it today. Though known as Helen of Troy, she was actually queen of this warlike city-state. Charles? What was Sparta? Right. Oh, right. Let's go to Greek mythology for 800. Moving down one. Like Lot's wife, this fabled musician should have never looked back. Charles? Who was Orpheus? Right. <laughs> I love it when you get excited like that. <laughs> this is an again. exciting game to play, Alex. Greek mythology for 1,000. For 1,000. With snakes for hair and eyes that weep blood, these humanities pursued and tormented sinners. Charles. Who were the... Okay, they were the... 
Sorry, you're taking too long. Bodell. Who are the fates? Pardon? The fates? The fates is incorrect. Kevin, do you want no to try way. it? No, who are the Furies or the Erinies? Oh, impression. Yeah, but it was, should have come up with it sooner. Charles, okay. you select. Greek mythology for 400. Answer. To Greeks, a race of mighty women. To South Americans, their mighty river. Charles. What is Amazon? Right. Greek mythology for 200. Answer. She was the patron goddess and guardian of what is now Greece's capital city, Bodil. Who is Athena? That is right. Tough trivia for 400. Back to that category. Words with which Betty Furness assured appliance buyers. Charles? What is, uh, wasn't let, well, let the buyer beware. It wasn't oh, that. no, that is not it. Bodil or Kevin? Either one of you, Betty Furness, you remember watching television when she used to say, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Bodil, we sure. have you to make the next selection, please. Starts with G for 200. At the top of that column. Francisco Franco's superlative title, Charles. What is Generalissimo? Right. Let's say we're out of Greek mythology. Government for 800, please. Government for eight. He is the U.S. government's chief law enforcement officer. Kevin. Who is the attorney general? That is right. Mm -hmm. Government for a thousand. At the bottom, it's West Germany's lower house of parliament. Kevin. What is the Bundestag? The Bundestag is right, yes. Way to go. Uh, 20th century for 200. New category. Let's see what we have. As a result of this 1912 disaster, all steamships must have enough lifeboats for all passengers. Charles. What was the Titanic You're disaster? You're right. 20th century for 400, please. Moving down. In December of 1984, the Pentagon announced it would put a spy satellite over this country. Bodil. What is Cuba? No. Kevin. What is the Soviet Union? That is right. Yes. 20th century for 600. Answer. This world group dissolved in 1946, the same year the first UN General Assembly met. Bodil. What was the League of Nations? The League of Nations, right, go. 20th century for 800. Answer. He was famous for leaving Roosevelt Field, New York, May 20th, 1927, alone. Bodil. Who was Lindbergh? Lindbergh is right. We've got less than a minute to go in the round. 20th century for 1,000. The final uh, clue is a daily double. Bodil, you've got 3,700. You're in third place. You trailed Kevin by 100, and you trailed Charles by 4,500. How much are you risking? 1,500. For 1,500. Here is the clue. In March of 1979, this mediator signed the Camp David Peace Treaty as the witness. Who was President Carter? Absolutely right. And that brings you up some more. You're up to 52. Select again. Starts with G for 400. The answer is the study of aging. Kevin. What is genealogy? No. Charles. What is gerontology? Gerontology. That is right. Go. Starts with G for 600. Answer. Condition caused by too many cars in one area, prohibiting movement in any direction. Bodil. What is a jam? <laughs> Sorry, no. Kevin. What is gridlock? Gridlock is what we're going for. You select. Tough trivia of 600. Tough for six in 1907. He became a bank robber to raise funds for the fledgling Bolshevik party, Bodil. Who was Lenin? No. Sorry, Kevin. Who was Trotsky? No, that is incorrect. I'll give it to you. Who was Stalin? Stalin's the only one that you guys hadn't mentioned. Mm -hmm. Kevin, select. Tough trivia for 800. Answer. Title character's favorite baseball player in The Old Man and the Sea. Kevin. Joe DiMaggio. Who's Joe DiMaggio? That is right. Oh, Go again. Boy. Tough trivia for a thousand. Last clue. Unusual middle name of former Defense Secretary Robert S. McNamara. Unusual middle name. Robert S. McNamara. The S stood for strange. Kevin, select. <laughs> We won't have time. We had just two more answers to go, but what a game. Bodil, $4,000. You're in this. Kevin with $4,200. Charles with $8,600. Still up for grabs. Any one of you could become Jeopardy champion in just a few moments. Remember, the one with the most cash will be champ. The others receive some prizes. Let's take a look at those right now while Johnny describes them. Today's second place contestant will receive 10 Seekers Lightweight Metal Woods, a set of Olympian Verilite P356 Woods with matching Verilite irons and professional staff bag furnished by Pen Seeker. And Serengeti Driver's wardrobe of his and her sunglasses, designed for the demands of driving, furnished by Corning Optics. Today's third place contestant will receive a sports ensemble featuring kangaroos, the athletic shoes with pockets, plus lightweight nylon running shorts and top, and an all-weather game X suit furnished by kangaroos. And now let's go back to Alex Trebek. So far today on Jeopardy, the Texas Brigade has been terrific. And now they get a chance to make their wagers on this final Jeopardy category. The Oscars. Think about it, players. Make your wagers. We'll come back to decide the match right after this. Welcome back. 
Let me begin this round by stating the obvious. Today's trivia champion on Jeopardy will be a Texan. Uh, all right, all three players have made their wagers ba based on this category called the Oscars. And I love this answer. You're going to have 30 seconds to come up with a question once I read it to you. Here we go. From 1978 to 1981, all Oscar winners for Best Supporting Actress had these same initials. Good luck, players. start with Bodil Wiggins, who had $4,000 and was in third place. That seemed to be very tough for you, this one, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what you came up with in, in the way of initials. What are L.S.? Who are you thinking of? I just made up two initials. You made up two <laughs> initials. Well, they are good initials, but not good enough to be correct, I'm sorry to say. It's going to cost you some money. How much? 500 So you're left with 3500 As we move down here to Kevin Davis, Let's see if he came up with the right initials, first of all. What was M.S. for Maggie Smith, Meryl Streep, Mary Steenburgen, and Maureen Stapleton? You're right. How much are you adding to your 4,200? 4,200, giving you a total of 8,400. Nice going, Kevin. Now we go down here to Charles Beale. Had 8,600. Did he get the right question? He did indeed, and he's going to add to his winnings. How much? $100, $8,700. He remains champion, a three-day total of $30,600. Congratulations, champ. We'll see you on our next show against two more challenges. Who knows, might be two more players from Texas. Join us and find out, won't you? So long, everybody. Some of our departing contestants will receive the answer is Diet Shasta, now with the great taste of NutraSweet. Choose one of 18 great flavors and say, I want to pop Diet Shasta. Mazzola No Stick, the light spray that takes the fat out of frying. Save calories and make cleanup easy with Mazzola No Stick. Four gallons of super scrubbable True Test Easy Care Latex Flat Wall and Trim Finish. Good for both walls and woodwork. Sold only by True Value Hardware Stores. Q-Tex announces eye makeup so special it's, well, just about perfect. Q-Tex Perfect Color for Eyes. Reuniti, America's best loved imported wine. Red, white, rosé, and gold. Have you tried Reuniti on ice? It's so nice. Charles Beale of Duncanville has already won over $30,000 this week on Jeopardy. Tomorrow he goes for his fourth straight win. Let's all be there to cheer him on tomorrow at 4 on Channel 5. Is Jeopardy. Now entering the studio are today's contestants. A restaurant manager, originally from Lake Bluff, Illinois, Bill Fox. An electrician from Phoenix, Arizona, Bob Messer. And our returning champion, a public relations administrator from Duncanville, Texas, Charles Beale, whose cash winnings total $30,600. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you very much. Hello, ladies. Informative entertainment, we hope, in the next half hour. And for you people who've been watching us on a regular basis in recent weeks, you'll have noticed that my voice has changed considerably. I am indebted to Philippine flu strain A, which has been with me for quite some time and will probably be with me for the remainder of this show at least. Hope it won't bother you. I know it won't bother the players. They want to earn some cash, so let's get right to it. We'll put the board in motion and play the first round on Jeopardy. Here we go. <laughs> $500 answers at the bottom, 100 at the top in these categories. Two-letter words, British Isles, superstitions, dogs, signs, and finally, with a quotation mark around the word, all nines, and we know what that means. Charles Beale, you're averaging $10,000 a day. See if you can keep it going. Make a selection. We'll do our best, Alex. Let's start with British Isles for 100, please. The very first clue of the day is this one. Many of these drinking establ establishments still have separate saloon sections for the upper class. Bill. What are pubs, Alex? Pubs or public houses. You're right, and you're on the board, and you're in control. 
I'd like British Isles for 200, please. Moving down. Side dish for beef, named for a dessert and an English county, though it's not sweet and is served all over Britain. Bill again. What is Yorkshire, please? Pardon? What is Yorkshire? Be a little more specific. Yorkshire pudding? Yorkshire pudding, yes. I would like superstitions for 100, please. New category. The almost universal response to a sneeze. Bill? God bless you. What, I'm sorry, what is God bless you? Remember to phrase it in the form of a question. Go again. Let's go back to British Isles for 300, please. All right. While green is the color of era, this color is claimed by Northern Ireland Protestants. Bob? What is orange, Alex? Orange is absolutely right. Let's try uh, British Isles for 400. The answer is, England has not been invaded by a foreign enemy since this landmark date. Bill? Oh, I'm sorry, you're taking too long. Charles, wait a minute. Now try it. Charles? What is 1066? 1066, yes, the Norman invasion. Right. Let's finish up British Isles for 500, please. The last clue is this. Soldiers still guard Scotland's royal crown in this castle where the Scottish kings lived. Bill? What is Windsor Castle, please? No, I'm sorry, that is wrong. Charles or Bob? No answer or no question from either one of you. What is Edinburgh Castle? Edinburgh Castle. All right, we've got Charles with no money, Bob with 300, and Bill showing minus 600, but we're not quite sure about the score, so we'll take a commercial break. We'll verify it. We'll come back and chat with you, and then we will continue with the answers and questions right here on Jeopardy. Hang on, folks. <laughs> Welcome back. The scores are correct. 400 for Charles. 300 for Bob, minus 500 for you, Bill Fox. You uh, run a restaurant where? In uh, West L.A., Alex. Ah, and where are you from originally? I'm originally from Lake Bluff, Illinois. Says here you're uh, a serious bike rider. You once rode many miles to college. How many miles? I rode from Chicago to the University of Missouri in uh, my younger years, believe me. I... How far is that? It's about 500 miles. Well, you didn't do that daily, obviously. No, no, no. <laughs> Just once you it Took did. me a week. Took you a week to do it. Right. All right, good to have you on the program. Thank You're you. in charge of the board, and you'll make the next selection when we uh, continue our game. Bob Messer, electrician. I like that, from Phoenix, Arizona. I love messing around with electricity. I rewired my house once. Now when I pull into the garage, nothing works. Twice <laughs> a king of a country. Explain that to me. Well, that's, that's correct, Alex. I was twice a king. Uh, it's, a, it's a medieval uh, historical recreation group I was a member of at one time. And uh, we had tournaments where you fought with swords and shields. And I swung a mean stick when I was younger. Uh, so I was king uh, twice. Did you get to throw anybody in the dungeon? No, but uh, it's almost that good. I, I recommend being king to anyone. OK. <laughs> All right. I love that in this republic. Charles Beale who is our champion, is a public relations administrator, ladies and gentlemen, with Dallas Baptist University. Now, people who work in public relations, Charles, often do it because they enjoy working with folks and also because there's a bit of showbiz or a love of show business in their lives. Uh, what about you? Is there any ambition? That's right. I, I would like to uh, be uh, the host of a nationally televised game show someday. <laughs> Okay, now I've got to give the answers, right? That's right. Oh, no, I've got to give the questions. I, I better not change my role. You come back here. <laughs> okay, let's go back to work. And, Bill, check the board over. Make a selection for me, please, and we'll continue with the answers and questions. All right, Alex, I would like uh, to try superstitions for 200, please. The answer this time is, after spilling this, you should s throw some over your shoulder. Bill. What is salt, please? Correct. Uh, superstitions for 300? Answer. Americans' aversion to this unlucky paper money has upped government printing costs. Bill again. What is a $2 bill? That is right. You're back to zero. Uh, superstitions for 400 please. Famous phantom ship supposedly still seen in stormy weather off the Cape of Good Hope. Bill. What is the... I'm sorry, you're taking too long. Bob. What is the lost Dutchman? No, that is incorrect. Charles, do you want to ring in, Charles? I sure do. What is the Flying Dutchman? The Flying Dutchman is the one we were looking for. Yes, indeed. Now you select. Two letter words for 100. All right, new category. Let's sail through this one. Win, Asner, or Sullivan, for example. Bill. What is Ed, please? Yes. I'd like two letter words for 200. Answer. Precedes for broke and man go. Bill. Well, what is go? Yes. I would like two letter words for 300. In the Bible, often teamed with behold, Charles. What is uh, low? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Glad you got that, and the folks back in Dallas will be happy also. Right, the Dallas Baptist. <laughs> Two letter words for 400, please. Answer. A printer's space one half the width of an M. Bill. What is a... Sorry. Charles. What is an L? No. Oh. 
Bob, do you want to try it? I have no idea. No idea. What is an N? N E N. Oh. You see that in a lot of crossword puzzles. Charles, you select again. Okay, two letter words for 500, please. We'll wrap it up with this clue. Term for an Irish father that titled a 1978 Tony winning play. Bill. What is Pa? No. Bob or Charles? No. No one wants to take it. The title of the play was Da. D A Da. Back to Charles for the choice. Let's go to dogs for 100, please. Dogs for 100. The necklace a dog itches to wear. Charles. What is the uh, collar? The uh, flea collar. All right. You've got to be specific. And you were at the end. Go. Dogs for 200, please. 35 mile per hour dog or vodka with grapefruit juice, Bob? What's a greyhound? That's right. You could use one now. Uh, I think. Dogs for 300, please. Breed used as hush puppy trademark. Bill. What is a basset hound? You are right. Go. I'd like dogs for 400, please. A dog's most highly developed sense, Bill. What is smell? You are right. Oh, let's stick with dogs for 500. The final clue. National Dog Club, whose stud book only allows pure breeds. Do uh, Bob. What is the American Kennel Association? The American Kennel Association, yes. No, we can't give it to you, they tell me. Charles or Bill? Bill, what is the American Kennel Club? American Kennel Club, AKC. Sorry about that, Bob. It was a fine point, but we were going for the exact name. We've got less than a minute to go in the round. Bill, please I'd select. I'd like signs for 100, please. At the top of that column, red circle on white background with a red bar across a red P. Bob. Uh, do not enter. What is do not enter? No, sorry. Bill. What is no parking? No parking. The P means parking. Bill, select again. I would like signs for 200, please. This time. To Paul Revere, this signified the British were coming by sea. Charles. What is two, if by sea, uh, two lanterns right. in the... Okay. That's enough of an explanation. <laughs> Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Quit while I'm ahead. Signs for 300, please. Answer. A puff of white smoke arising from St. Peter's signifies this. Charles. What is the election of the new pope? Right. Go. Signs for 400, please. Answer. The seventh sign of the zodiac is symbolized by a pair of these, Bill. What are twins? No, sorry. Bob? Uh, what are scales? Scales, that's right. You select now. <laughs> Whoops, we won't have time. And let's see what we've got. We've got Charles in the lead with 1,300. Bob, you moved it up a bit. You're at minus one. And Bill is also at minus one. We're going to take a break. We'll come back after we have set the board up for double jeopardy. We should have a lot of fun in that round. You'll find out when we begin it after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Double Jeopardy coming up now. As you know, we've got about $18,000 in cash, two daily doubles to assist these three gentlemen in adding to their winnings. And already I've spotted a category up there that will be of particular interest to our champion, but he won't get to select first. Right now, let's put the dollar figures on the board. 1,000 at the bottom, 200 at the top. Here we go with the categories. Anatomy, the military, drama, jazz, religion, and colonial America. At the moment, Bob and Bill are tied for third place, but Bob, you gave us the last correct question, so would you make the selection for me, please? Uh, let's try the military for 200, Alex. At the top of that category, this brief clue, a military minister, Bob. What is a chaplain? That is right. Let's try the military for 400. Military service, whose official colors are scarlet and gold, Bill. What are the Marines? Yes, that's right. I would like anatomy for 600, please. In the middle of that, First column, it stores the bile produced by the liver. Charles. What is the pancreas? No, no I'm sorry, no, that is no. wrong. Bill. What is the gallbladder? The gallbladder is uh, what does it. That picks up $600 for you. I would like anatomy for 400 please. Moving up. They crack because of gas explosions in fluid filling them. Bob. Uh, what are teeth? No. Bill. What are knuckles? Knuckles, yes, the joints. Select again. I would like anatomy for 200 please. At the top. Of an infant, a teenage girl, and an old man, the one with the most bones, Charles. What is an infant? Infant is absolutely right, yes. You know where I'm going. Religion for 600, please. For 600. Here is the answer. Two words that gospel means and is said to bring. Charles. What is good news? Good news, good tidings also. Nice going. You're in control of the board. Make another selection. Religion for 800, please. Moving down. West Indian devil worship cult whose divinities include Baron Samedi, the god of cemeteries. Charles. What is voodooism? That is right. Religion for a thousand feet. At the bottom. What former astronaut James Irwin is looking for in Turkey. Bill. What is Noah's Ark? Noah's Ark is good for a thousand dollars. You select. 
I would like anatomy for 800, please. Back to that category, and we have a daily double for you. Bill, you're tied for the lead with Charles right now. You can break the tie simply by selecting a dollar amount and then giving me a correct question. I'll go for $1,300, please. All right. You'll wind up with $3,600 if you are right, uh, if you are correct on this. Though it makes up only 2% of the body's weight, it consumes up to 25% of the oxygen in the blood. What is the heart? Oh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The brain. The brain is what uses up all that oxygen, and mine is not using enough oxygen today, unfortunately. Bill, select again, you've got $1,000. Uh, let's switch to jazz for 200, please. Jazz for two. City known as the cradle of jazz. Bill again. What is New Orleans? Right. Jazz for 400. Moving down. Pipe instrument known as the god box in jazz slang. Bob. What is the clarinet? No, sorry. Bill or Charles? The god box is known as the organ. The organ. Makes Bill, sense. back to you. Uh, jazz for 600, please. The answer is our second daily double. All right, a moment ago you were tied with Charles at 2300. You now have 12. If you were, I'm not suggesting this, mind you, but if you were to bet $1,100 and were to answer correctly, you would be tied with him again. Well, let's see if I can make up a little bit of ground. I'll go uh, for $600, please. Okay, here is the answer. Where I'm going to dance off both my shoes to the Jelly Roll Blues. Bill? In St. Louis Blues. Oh, no, at the Darktown Strutters Ball. Well, I'll dance off both my shoes. Sorry, Bill, you're down to 600. Select again. Uh, let's try Colonial America for 200, please. All right, new category for you and the other players. Quaker State Oil is headquartered in this state founded by Quakers. Bob. Where is Pennsylvania? Right, go. Let's try the military for 600. Back to that one. The length of a watch in the Navy. Bob. What is uh, four hours? That is right. Go again. The military for 800. In the Army. The insignia for this rank is a single gold bar. Bill. What is a lieutenant? Be more specific. A second lieutenant. That is right. Uh, let's try Colonial America for 400, please. The other end of the board. Last name of three prominent New England religious intellectuals, Richard Increase and Cotton. Charles. Who were the Mathers? Mathers is right. Your turn to select. Religion for 400. Back to that category, this answer. Protestant translation of the Bible named for the British king who authorized it. Charles. What is the King James Version? That is right. Select again for Religion me. Religion for 200. Final clue in the category. Number of points on the Star of David. Bill. What are six? Six is right. You go. Let's try Colonial America for 600, please. At the middle of the column. It said Connecticut's charter was hidden in this type of tree to keep the king from taking it. Bob? What is an oak tree? You're right. Go. Uh, the military for $1,000. Last clue in that column. Civilian auxiliary of the Air Force. Bill? What is the Civil Air Patrol? Right. Nice going for $1,000. Uh, let's try jazz for 800, please. Jazz for eight. Term for jazz technique of shifting the accent to a normally unaccented beat. Bill? What is syncopation? You are right again for 800. Select. Let's try jazz for 1,000. Last clue in this category. Mel and Ella excel at this, singing meaningless syllables instead of words. Bill? What is scat singing? Scat singing is good for another 1,000. You've added to your lead. We've got less than a minute to go in the round. Select again. I'll try Colonial America for 800, please. The answer is? The first English child born in America, Charles. Who is Virginia Dare? You're right for 800. Select. Drama for 600. Drama for six. Though Irish, playwright Samuel Beckett writes in this language, Charles. What is Francais? Francais, absolutely right. Drama for 800. Answer, Ruth Gordon's husband. He's author of Born Yesterday. Charles again. I have no answer. Oh, that's too bad. Bob or Bill? Ruth Gordon's husband. His name is Garson Kanan. Charles, select, please. Drama for 1,000, please. At the bottom. He fathered the country girl and golden boy. He fathered the country girl and golden boy, and the author's name is Clifford Odette. Charles, please. I was going to say select again, but we won't have a chance for any more selections. But by golly, we've got ourselves a good, lively game. Charles with 3,700 in second place. Bill in the lead with 4,400. And Bob, believe it or not, you could steal this championship in a few moments when we get to play Final Jeopardy. Remember, the one with the most cash at the end is the one who returns as our champion. The other players receive some prizes. And here we go. We're going to take a look at those prizes while Johnny describes them. 
Today's second place contestant will receive Spacemate's Laundry Pair, a full-size stackable washer and dryer, front-loading washer designed to use less water, detergent, and bleach, plus electric or gas dryer furnished by White Westinghouse, and the Charbroil mid-size and portable gas barbecue grills for outdoor cooking, constructed of weather-resistant aluminum and steel. Enjoy cookouts in your backyard or travels from Charbroil. Today's third place contestant will receive Jules Jergensen's elegantly styled watches, a ladies' quartz analog with six diamonds and mesh bracelet, plus a gents' quartz analog day date with matching bracelet, furnished by Jules Jergensen. And now let's go back to Alex Trebek. And I think we've got a terrific final Jeopardy answer coming up for all of you. The category players is Republicans. We'll let you think about that and make your wages, and then we'll come back and reveal the answer and decide the contest right after this. Welcome back. I told you a few moments ago that I thought we had a terrific final Jeopardy answer. As soon as I give it to these three players, each of you will have 30 seconds in which to come up with the question. Be sure it is in that form. The category is Republicans. Here comes the answer. The two who were presidents during the centennial and bicentennial years. Good luck, players. Time's up. Put your pen down. Bob, we're going to start with you. You had $700. You were in third place. Let's see. What did you put down? The two who were presidents who were Cleveland and Ford. Cleveland is incorrect. Ford is the right part. But unfortunately, that means you are wrong. So it's going to cost you how much? $6.99, leaving you with $1. We move down here to Charles Beale, who was our returning champion, had $3,700. What did you put down as your final Jeopardy question? who were Hayes and Carter. Charles, I think you forgot the category. The category is Republicans, and President Carter was oh. many things, but he certainly was not a Republican. <laughs> he sure wasn't. Uh, how much did it cost you? All of it. Oh, you went big. First time he bet big and winds up with nothing. Let's move down the line to Bill Fox. Bill had 4,400. Did Says you get... Tyler. Hmm? Let's see what you put down as your... Who were Ford and... That says Tyler. Tyler, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. I the two presidents, so. the two Republicans who were president during the centennial and bicentennial years. Bicentennial was Ford. Ulysses Grant oh, was Grant. the Republican president during the centennial. I'll tell you what's going to happen right now, folks. The middle player here has one dollar. And that means that if Bill Fox bet everything he had, we will have a new Jeopardy champion with a grand total of one buck. Let's see how much Bill Fox bet, however. Did he go all the way? No, he didn't. He's going to leave himself $1,200. And Bill Fox is our new Jeopardy champion. Congratulations. You backed in, but that counts. We've got to go, folks, until next time when we will introduce two challengers for him, Alex Trebek, for everyone here. Have a good day. So long. Some of our departing contestants will receive The Answer is Diet Shasta, now with a great taste of NutraSweet. Choose one of 18 great flavors and say, I want to pop Diet Shasta. Mazzola No Stick, the light spray that takes the fat out of frying, save calories and make cleanup easy with Mazzola No Stick. Riuniti, America's best loved imported wine, red, white, rosé and gold. Have you tried Riuniti on ice? It's so nice. Cutex announces eye makeup so special it's, well, just about perfect. Cutex, perfect color for eyes. Nothing protects wood floors, furniture, and cabinets like Red Devil Polyurethane Clear Wood Finish. It's tough as the very devil.